All right, well, what we're going to do in this video is take a look at the explosion deformer. We'll take a look at the good, the bad, and where we may want to use it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's kind of an example of one place I would definitely use the explosion deformer. Um, and it's really just kind of these molecule look like things, uh, exploding, dissolving, whatever you want to, to call it. Now, we won't be doing this exact project type thing. We'll just be focusing on one molecule and looking at the explosion deformer, but it's just a little bit more MoGraph to get something like that. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, now, if you want to create a molecule, um, what uh, I have here is kind of a breakdown of it, though I have a whole other video um, from a long time ago about making a molecule. It's really just a bunch of spheres in a volume builder remeshed down um, and that's it. So uh, that's how I ended up with the molecule. Now the explosion deformer is under our deformers right here. So it's very easy just to grab it and make it a child of our molecule. And there, there is a second way to work with deformers as well. If you're not familiar with them, you can also place it inside of a null um, and it will work as a peer. So anything on the same level as it will also be affected by it. And so what that could be useful for is if you had multiple molecules in here, you could use one single explosion deformer to um, make them explode. Or as I've mentioned, pretty sure I've mentioned it, I actually think it works better for making something dissolve. That can be another way of using it though, as a child is typically, uh, is the most popular way. So already kind of spoiled the good stuff, but uh, if you just wanna make something explode, it really just comes down to the strength. And as you take that strength from zero to 100, um, the different polygons that make up your object, uh, which we'll see more here in a bit, will spread out, they will move, they will eventually scale down and they rotate um, until they are completely gone. So it's one of the reasons why I think it, you know, really should be called dissolve because that's essentially what it's doing. So we have our strength, okay, and you can animate that forwards or backwards. So it's a great way to make things come back together as well. Uh, you have the speed. So if you want things to move out more or less, you can obviously uh, adjust the speed. I think this is another interesting property just to create some, um, you know, simple animation, something perhaps a little bit more abstract, if you will, uh, just by working with the speed as well as the randomness for that matter, um, to get something where it's just some random pieces moving. Okay, so you have that, and this will really determine how far those pieces go before they scale down um, to zero. So um, how far, how fast, hence the name speed. Uh, you also have angle speed. So um, the amount of degrees it's gonna rotate, I believe that's before it disappears. So if you make that less, they will rotate less. If you make it more, they will rotate more. You know, it also just kind of helps randomize things perhaps a bit more as well, especially when you're, you know, zoomed in here, okay? So that can be a nice little property to adjust as well. You can see how it's just rotating things more or less. End size will allow you to set the scale for these pieces when um, your strength gets to 100. So a value of zero here uh, will completely disappear. So that's why we are seeing them dissolve. If you just wanted them to kind of move out or explode without, you could just set the end scale to one. And then when you get to a strength of 100%, there everything is. So, you know, especially if you were gonna do kind of a little bit of a back and forth type animation, you probably don't want that end size to be one. Note, we can't actually make it larger, so things can get larger over time. So this could work for maybe doing a transition, um, you know, things like that. Very, very nice property there to work with. Though I do think zero is probably the most common way of using it. And I've already kind of touched on this, but randomness. Um, so it really does what the name implies. With the randomness of zero, notice how you can actually see uh, what you know our object is almost regardless of the, the strength here. It's a very uniform um, explosion. And so randomness just kind of does what the name implies. It's pretty straightforward there. Um, don't think I need too much of a lengthy explanation for that. Um, but yeah, randomness. So when it comes to animating something exploding, or like I've said, dissolving, really just a matter of animating the strength from zero to 100. And there you have it. You have 
your object exploding, dissolving, whatever you want to call it. Uh, now, let's take a little bit of a, a deeper dive here and see what's exactly happening because you may have noticed that the pieces that it makes are not very organic. They're not very natural looking. And a big part of that is it's based on the polygons of your object. So if those are four-sided polygons or triangles, that is exactly what you're going to see and what you're going to get. So for something that's high polygon, relatively high polygon like this molecule, there's only so much you can do here. You know, maybe you can go into, you know, line cut um, and just kind of go to town here to try and make some more interesting pieces. Okay, but that's going to require a lot of work because uh, even with just a couple of, um, you know, line cuts there, I only end up with a few triangles really overall compared to the number of polygons. So um, you can also, as I'm already starting to see here, end up with some fong issues when you do just randomly cut because you end up with so many triangles and, and weird polygons. So my recommendation would be, you know, to try and do something like that earlier on. So I probably should have tried to do that um, well, maybe perhaps before remeshing, uh, though remeshing would probably kind of smooth this out as well and just kind of show you the difference it can make. So if I take my, um, explosion here and put it on my cube, right, I just get the individual polygons. But if I come back into this cube and just do line cut a little bit, and let's see if we uncheck visible only here, it should go all the way through. And so this can give me some more natural shapes to my polygons, which we will see if I get out of polygon mode there. So that's a little bit more interesting, a little bit more realistic, if you will. So the shape of the polygons does matter when it comes to the explosion deformer. Um, so that's one of the downsides of it. You know, that isn't true for explosion FX. Uh, it's not true if you use the Voronoi fracture. Um, so just keep that in mind. Another issue, we can get rid of the cube or at least put the explosion deformer back on my our molecule. Um, another issue is that there's no way to have dynamics on this. So these pieces are just going to keep on moving. Um, they may go through each other, though I don't think you see too much of that, but they will also intersect other pieces of geometry. They will not interact with them. Um, there's no way to get gravity applied to these. So there's definitely a little bit of a downside with um the explosion deformer in that regard, if you're trying to use dynamics. So make sure um, you are taking that into consideration. Okay, uh, once again, um, explosion uh, VFX here, or explosion FX does have gravity applied, so things will fall. Um, it won't inter interact with anything else because it's not a simulation. If you did use the Voronoi fracture with, you know, the bu uh, bullet tags or any of the other simulation tools we have, then yes, you can get those objects to interact with each other. The last kind of downside is thickness or lack thereof with these objects. So um, now that is something we can actually fix, though it's a little bit tricky. Uh, if we use um, our cloth surface, which is kind of hidden here, I don't really think you can find it in your other generators, though I may be mistaken. Uh, nope, there it is right there. So I was mistaken, but you can put your molecule in it and um, it will do a couple of things if you're not careful. The first is um, it will subdivide it very much like a subdivision surface, which we don't need, okay? So I can bring that back down, but then I can also add thickness here, right? And this is what's nice is it, it is making things maybe a little bit larger, but at least everything is consistent and smooth here. And then as I Bring this back, you can see, yes, I do actually have some thickness. And if I increase that a bit, you know, I can go a little bit higher. And so that's a nice way to get around one of those um, limitations that we have with this. And can once again, make things perhaps just a little bit more realistic. I almost think it looks like confetti uh, without thickness, you know, more like a dissolve. So uh, those are kind of some potential uses um, I've seen. Now, just to give you a little bit of an idea of how I finished and made this kind of little scene here, um, in case you were interested. What I did is put our molecule with an animated explosion in a cloner. Um, the instance mode does need to be set to instance for this uh, because of the step effector. Um, and then just created a little bit of a, a grid array of 
molecules here, okay? Now, I've already cashed this out because playback was pretty slow, um, but without the step effector, everything um, is gonna explode at the same point in time, okay? Whereas if you do use the step effector, um, you can change that, and you can change that by using this time, time offset property, which is in pretty much all effectors, but uh, primarily works. Um, I've really only been able to get it to work or have wanted to use it in the step effector here. So by setting a value of 50, um, I'm telling the, uh, this animation, these animations to kind of extend by 50. So between from when the first one starts till the last one finishes, it's going to be 50 frames. So if my animation here is 0 to 190, then everything should finish by frame um, 150. Although, wait a second, I think I got my math a little bit wrong. But hopefully you guys get the idea. It's going to just take all those and offset them so that they all explode over the course of 50 frames. All right, so that's how we're able to get um, some, you know, exploding sooner, more, shouldn't say more, sooner uh, than others. And just a simple animated camera here to kind of pull out and show all these dissolving molecules since I do think that is a pretty good use for it. So that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe. And until next time, take care.